guys feel God's presence? Do you guys? We're going to impart um, into all of you. And I just have something really quick to share with you so that I give you something practical. Um, I want to talk real quick about um, the glory of God. Can you just say the glory of God? Yeah, I'm a sucker for the glory of God. Love the glory of God. Say it one more time. Glory of God. Um, uh, I want to talk to you real, real quick. Uh, what is the glory of God? Um, how to be a carrier of the glory of God. And I want to be just uh, practical so that we know how to be carriers of the glory of God, uh, what it is, and um, it will help. Sometimes when we think of glory, um, you know, it seems something so mystical or you know, atmospheric, and we think, you know, how do you bring the glory of God? But it really truly isn't. Um, we can all be carriers of the glory of God, and our church can actually, uh, you know, have an atmosphere full of the glory of God. So I just want to share that with you and uh, be very practical with you guys. Okay, so you ready? I want you to take notes. It's, it's on the glory of God. I don't know how far I'll get, so um, I want to be able to just impart it to you and then release you before 3.30. So we will start. Let's, let's just go ahead and... Um, bow our heads and close our eyes father we just thank you and we thank you for what you did earlier and we know you're not done yet father for there is more um say there's more <laughs> Father, we thank you for what you're going to do right now. I thank you for your glory. I thank you that your glory is here. We are glory carriers. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the impartation that you will give to each and every man and woman of God. I thank you that after this session, they will never be the same again. I pray, Father, that in the name of Jesus, the glory of God, Lord, will just begin to just overtake them, God. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, and I... I hide behind you and I just ask that you take over completely and father in Jesus name that you speak through every word that comes out of my mouth we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus and everybody says glory <laughs> um, we need um, and I said it earlier in the first session that we need the presence of God to really increase in our lives um, I believe that we all have to carry a deeper stronger powerful presence of God more than ever um, once you experience the tangible presence of God, it's very hard to, uh, to, to have anything less than that. You, you really are, I am a sucker. I am hungry for the glory of God. Uh, I pursue the glory of God. I am hungry for more of God. Um, I am a presence seeker like David was. And so I understand the glory of God. I understand how to operate in the glory of God. And as ministers, as leaders, we have to understand that the glory of God is the way to go because he takes us from glory to glory, from victory to victory. But in the glory, there are so many things that begin to happen. So we have to be passionate for the glory of God. And um, it's what has kept me. Um, if I'm under assault or I'm under attack, uh, I need to endure something in my life. I'm going through a season of many attacks. It, it is the glory of God that has made me overcome. Um, it is the glory of God that has caused me to endure. It is the glory of God that caused me to have victory each and every time. You can't lose when you have the glory of God. You will win every time. You will always conquer. You will always have the victory and the glory of God. Colossians 1.27, I'll just give some scriptures. You can go home and read them. But it says, Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so he's inside of us. So what, what we have to do is if we are going to be glory carriers, we really have to prioritize what we value. We have to really prioritize what's important to us. I know we are busy as ministers, but we have to prioritize on what is really truly important in our lives. And then we can be carriers of the glory when we prioritize correctly. So when you spend a lot of time with the Lord and you get very real with him, you will have incredible moments with him where you begin to tell him if you're a glory carrier you begin to say things like i will go wherever you want me to go i will surrender every area of my life um it doesn't matter what you want um i will give it to you um when you are a glory carrier your attitude changes your words your speech changes everything begins to change about you um you are in complete surrender um, before the Lord, your relationship with him becomes very intimate and very close. And so everything, everything is completely changing when you are a glory carrier. You begin to be set apart for the King of Kings. So I want, I want you to write this down. Glory is not just a force. Glory is not just a power. That's not what glory is. Glory is, isn't simply just a force. It isn't just a power. Um, when, you, when I talk about the glory of God, I'm talking about the person of God. 
it is God, his presence, his nearness. That is the glory of God. So we're actually talking about not the anointing. I am actually talking about the actual person of God. So when we are glory carriers and we talk about the glory of God, it is actually the person, the nearness of God. And so there's really, um, you guys all know the story in John chapter 11. I don't have to read the whole thing, but it, it's be, Jesus they're, they're calling on Jesus and they're saying Lazarus is dying and they want Jesus to show up because he's about to die. And, uh, you know, he, here's Lazarus, John chapter 11 and verse 40. And I love what he says in verse 40. He said, believe and you will see the glory of God. And so when you really break down that scripture, it's beautiful because before he dies, Jesus doesn't get there. And he says, I only, I only do what I see my, what I, what, I only do what my father tells me to do. Meaning if you're going to be a glory carrier, you can't be a glory carrier without surrender. So when you want to be a glory carrier and increase the presence of God in, in your life, it really is a place of surrender. There's no other way to increase the presence in your life. It can only be increased through surrender. And so you start to die to things in your life that perhaps you hadn't died before. But that is the way to the glory of God. So Jesus never did anything unless his father told him to do it. You will never walk in the glory of God without that surrender. Matter of fact, that means that you're going to look foolish to people. Sometimes it's going to be very uncomfortable. Sometimes people will misunderstand you. Sometimes they don't get you. But because you are so surrendered, you do what your father tells you to do. Jesus was willing to be so misunderstood and he shows up afterwards you know the story and Martha was so upset but Jesus tells her in verse 40 believe and you will see the glory of God and that it was the glory of God that brought Lazarus back to life there are things in our lives that need resurrection and it is in the glory of God that dead places start to come back to life our churches they come back to life things that look like they're dying they come back to life. Doors start to open in the glory of God. You, you cause the stones to be removed in the glory of God. Circumstances begin to change in the glory of God. So the glory of God is the miracle realm of God. It is the supernatural realm of God. It is God's person, the person of God. The glory of God is his nearness. So when you look at somebody who carries very strong presence, you are talking about the nearness of God in their lives. That is the glory of God. And so there are things in our own personal lives that can never be done on our own. There are things in our lives that will never be able to be accomplished on our own. You could be so talented, you could be so gifted, but unless you're a glory carrier, that thing isn't gonna move. It is what caused, the glory of God is what caused the idol Dagon to fall face, flat on his face, it was when the Ark of the Covenant came in. Do y'all know the story? First Samuel chapter 5 verse 4. And Dagon fell. Idolatry falls at the glory of God. It is a place that we need to be ushered into. And we need to taste it. And we need to live in the glory of God. Can you say I need to live in the glory of God? You know you can actually live in the glory of God. It's not something mystical. When you live in the glory of God. Things just accelerate in your life. They just accelerate. Jesus wants you to come into that glory. It is a place of resurrection. It's a place where it's not just power, but miracles and all kinds of different things begin to occur in that realm. When you become like Mary, Mary fell at the feet of Jesus. She abided in the presence of God. She's a glory carrier. Now Psalm 91, and I'm going to land there. Psalm 91, and then I'm going to pray for you. Psalm 91. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. It says, he who dwells in, under the shadow of the Almighty. Think about that. So write this down. The glory is an atmosphere. It is the space around the throne. That is the glory. The glory has to do with proximity. So when I'm a glory carrier, it has everything to do with an atmosphere. If I walk into a place and I am a glory carrier, the atmosphere has to shift. 
If I walk into a nation, the atmosphere has to shift because you are a glory carrier. So you walk into places that are dark, the, the, the atmosphere shifts. You don't have to try to force it to change. It just shifts because you are, you are close to the almighty God. And so glory has to do with proximity. Can you say glory has to do with proximity? The glory is not the anointing. The glory has to do with the proximity of God. So as you're walking in the glory of God, what happens is you're typically, or this is in the natural, we can say it like this. You're living really close to God. So if I'm going to be a glory carrier, come Pastor Norma, if I'm a glory carrier, you know, she represents God. Okay. So she represents God. If I am a glory carrier, that means that I am near God. And glory has everything to do with proximity, how close you are to God. It has to do with nearness. If God is, is telling me to move, I'm close. He who abides under the shadow of the Almighty. So think about Psalm 91. So it, it, it creates an atmosphere in your life. It creates, uh, it changes. It's, it's, it's the space around the throne of God. That is the glory of God. And so Psalm 91, one gives us all kinds of promises. Go home and read it. I love the passion translation of Psalm 91, one all the way. You could read it to 16. He says, he who dwells, can you say dwell? So if I'm dwelling, dwelling means lodging. Dwelling means to live. Dwelling, dwelling means to live up under or you're close to God. He said, I will say he is my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my God. And so when you, you start to trust him. Now that word, I want you to write this down. That word abide, dwell. You know where it, it comes from the word enthroned. And it comes from the Hebrew word yasha. And you know what it means to abide under the shadow of the almighty? It really has an association with one seated as royalty. When I abide under the shadow of the Almighty has to do with proximity. I am close to God. I now live under an atmosphere of the throne of God. I'm a carrier of that type of presence, right? And so if you think of that word, Yasha, it's associated with one seated as royalty. If I am a glory carrier, has to do with proximity, I am seated in heavenly places. So that means I don't walk in the natural. I rise above my circumstances. I rise above situations. So the glory, say the glory, it means that you live up close to him. You are close to him. And the promises when you are a glory carrier and you abide, come again, and you just sit right here. So here's the throne room of God. But when I decide on a daily basis to live close to him. That means my attitude has to change. That means a lot of things have to change because the glory will expose a lot of things in your life. So sometimes people don't want the glory because the minute I get close to the father, believe me, things are going to show up. The light is going to show up. And when we desire change and we choose, I want to be close to him. I want to know his thoughts. I want to know what he wants for my life and I want to know what he wants me to surrender and I'm willing to do all of that at the expense of carrying the glory of God it's worth it so glory has to do with how close we are to God it's proximity then that tells me and this gives you hope stay right there this gives me hope because glory is not something mystical for only one man or one woman this is for everybody it's how close you want to live to the father how near you want to be to the Father. I want to know his secrets. You know, he doesn't reveal his secrets to everybody. Because not everybody's willing to obey. In the glory of God, he shows you the strategies. He tells you how to fight that. He tells you how to defeat that. It is in the glory of God. Can you see the glory of God? Now, go home and read it. It's long. But there you will find protection. There you're going to find provision. It is there you find the promises, all the promises that God has for you. We can read it. You want me to read it? He, it says, when you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, 
You are hidden in the strength of God most high. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me. The only God for me and my great confidence. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy. I have been in the glory of God and all of a sudden the Lord will whisper a scheme of the devil before it even started. And I can counterattack the plan of the devil. The glory of God has many, many benefits and many promises. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me. The only God for me and my great confidence. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy and he will protect you from false accusation. He will protect you from deadly curses. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield keeping you from harm. You will never worry about an attack of demonic forces at night, nor have to fear a spirit of darkness coming against you. Do not fear a thing, whether by night or by day. Demonic danger will not trouble you, nor will the powers of evil launched against you, even in a time of disaster with thousands and thousands being killed you will remain unscathed and unharmed you will be a spectator as the wicked perish in judgment for they will be paid back for what they have done when we live our lives within the shadow of God most high our secret hiding place we will always be shielded from harm how then could evil prevail against us or disease infect us God sends angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go defending you from all harm if you walk into a trap they'll be there for you and keep you from from stumbling you'll even walk unharmed against the fiercest powers of darkness trampling every one of them beneath your feet for here is what the Lord God Almighty spoke to me because you have delighted in me as my great lover I will greatly protect you I will set you in high places safe and secure before my face I will answer your cry for help every time you pray and you will find and feel my presence even in your time of pressure even in your time of trouble I will be your glorious hero and give you a feast you will be satisfied with a full life and with all that you do for me for you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation that sounds pretty good and and the protection that comes upon our lives the provision that comes uh, upon our lives it, he says he who abides under the shadow if I'm going to be under the shadow of pastor Norma I've got to be close I've got to be close because that shadow's protecting me. See, I, he can't, a God can't be distant and then me expect to walk in the glory of God. I've got to be under the shadow. If God moves, because God is always moving, I've got to move where his shadow is. And it is in that place that I'm protected. He who abides under the shadow of the Almighty. So that means that when the heat of battle rises, I'm protected. No weapon formed against you can prosper. It is where you are fulfilled, you are refreshed there, you are redeemed there, you are restored there. It is in the glory of God. When you are shadow, you are up close to him, up close to the presence of God. I have moments with God in my prayer time that I could feel his breath on my, on my cheek. Sometimes um, I have seen the side. I have felt his beard. Um, I have heard his audible voice. Uh, you're safe there. A thousand may fall at your right, ten thousand at your left. Nothing can come near your tents. You can protect your family in the glory of God. You can protect your church in the glory of God. You can protect everything from any demonic power that tries to, any lie that rises up against you, just hide under the glory. Apostles would carry the glory of God in Acts chapter 5. We see it all throughout Acts. The apostles would carry the glory of God. Some of them, their shadows would heal because they abided under the shadow of the Almighty. We don't have to create it. It's just the proximity. That's all that is. It's how close you want to be to God. It isn't about uh, a name. I'm an apostle. I'm a prophet. No, I, I want to know how close you are to God. I want to know, do you abide there? At all costs, hear me. I protect my prayer life. It is what I value the most. My relationship with God, I value it more than anything. It is how close do you want to be with God? Don't let any attack take you away from the presence of God. The attack should take you towards the presence of God. Your prayer life should not be, should not be something you negotiate. Your prayer life is priority. 
It is you being close to the Father. There's not a man, there is not a woman that is bigger than their prayer life. All the glory of God that you want to carry has everything to do with proximity. As a matter of fact, the real measure of a person is show me their prayer life. Because when you carry the glory of God, I'm telling you, I fight from that place. I'm telling you, there is not a battle that you will lose when you are up under the glory of God. There's not a place and a location that you can't go into. I don't care if it's the darkest. I don't care if it's the streets of the darkest place in New Zealand. You can walk there and lives are changed. John Wesley said it best. He said, just burn for God and everybody will come see you burn. It has to do with proximity. It, hasn't, it has nothing to do with somebody special and somebody's not special. I used to think that. I used to think that glory had to do, you know, is a man that carries the glory of God. This has to do with proximity. You want the presence of God to increase? It has everything to do with proximity. I want to be close to you. And I don't mind you exposing some issues in my life. I don't mind it at all. Go right ahead. Matter of fact, I'd like to see it because I don't want to carry that. See, I have, I have found God. I have found God. God I that's that's where I learn about God that's where I get to know him that's where I get to know me I found him in prayer the presence of God is the most hear me the presence of God is the most important opportunity to any believer to you your biggest chance at everything is in the presence of God and when you respond wrong and he is before you can I tell you what happens you wind up bankrupt there's times where God is pulling me and tugging me and he's telling me to wake up. You know those nights so you can't sleep and you toss and turn? Quit tossing and turning. Get up and pray. Because he's calling you and there's a grace there and God is tugging at your heart. But see, when, when we ignore and we respond wrong to the presence and the presence is there, but we respond wrong, we wind up bankrupt. But glory wants to come on the earth glory wants to come upon the people see it's not something mystical it's for everybody our prayer life gives us access to everything that we are not it is in the glory of God where great miracles start to happen that's where people come from all walks of life they want to see God you know I'll say this to you and, I, and I'll end it here the glory of God say the glory of God something so beautiful because another way and I'm going to give you something practical it has to do with proximity say proximity but can I tell you how glory comes to through your crushing second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 and 18 for this momentary affliction is producing in me a far greater weight of glory glory is made out of trouble you can't have glory without going through trouble and pressure where you see glory there was affliction where you see glory there was pressure where you see glory there was great tribulation for every affliction there has to be a glory if you have gone through affliction you ought to have greater glory matter of fact the strength of your glory rests on the magnitude of your affliction it costs you to carry the glory of God that's why you value it that's why you're willing to surrender anything so easily because it costs you to carry what you're carrying it costs you it costs you sweat it costs you blood and it's cost you a lot of tears it's where you burn away every pride it burns away everything that is not good that is not good that is that is keeping you from from becoming that glorious vessel for the earth he cannot put new glory with something that's leaking out. He can only put new glory when, when, when you're willing to surrender every area of your life. Glory, you know what it means? It comes from the word boros, and, and that means load. It means abundance. It means authority. It means kabod. It means weight. So in other words, hear me and hear me well. Your glory should outweigh the affliction that you just went through. If you're going to know how much glory you're going to have, just look at how much affliction that you have had. Because glory should always far outweigh the affliction. If you've been through hardships, you've been through sadness, you've been, you should come out with more glory. You should be coming out with more glory. Some people got stuck, but we unstuck you right now. 
Some of you got stuck with the affliction. You got stuck in the problem and the criticism and the attack. You can't get stuck because the affliction was meant to produce glory, a weight of glory, a weight of glory that far exceeds the affliction that you just went through. I ought to look at you after the affliction and I ought to say, wow, you carry so much presence of God. You got closer to God. So in between, hear me, the Bible says that we go from glory, come on, you know what, to, but it's the in between that we have a problem with. We got stuck between. You're supposed to carry greater war, glory. This is this far greater weight of glory. You say, well, how is it that the glory of God has increased in your life? It was through a lot of affliction. It was through a lot of crushing. It was through a lot of pain. It was through a process that I had to endure. But I ought to come out of there so full of the glory of God. You ought to taste so good to people. You ought to, they ought to look at you and say, whoa, what are you carrying now? And if you're not, you're stuck. And we unstuck you right now. Every problem, every abandonment. I was abandoned. You know, I was abandoned. And so that brought a process in my life. My father was an apostle. And I, I was pretty much abandoned. And so it was a very trialsome time in my life. But that brought me closer to God. That didn't pull me away from God. I was already ministering. That brought me closer to God. And so we should be abandoning all. And, and, and our proximity towards God, it should be drawing, we should be drawing closer and closer to Him. We should want to spend time with Him. You with me? I don't want to keep going. I just want to pray for you. Is that okay? See the process in the wilderness and the desert? God says, you're going to see my glory. He's, you're going to see the glory of God. I promise you, you'll see the glory of God in everything. But we've got to become people that are so, come Pastor Norma, that are just so close. See, I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied with that. In the morning when I come before my father, I want him to touch me. I want him to bless me. I want him to hold me. I want him to caress me. I want him to kiss me. I want to feel God. And I'm not satisfied until I get out. That's why I spend hours and hours with him. Sometimes I can't get out. Sometimes I'm, it's so beautiful. The moments that I have with God, there's such a depth. It's so deep. It's so profound. I feel his love so strong. It's where I'm healed. It's where I'm delivered. It's where, it's where the glory comes. So I want to provoke that in you. That it's not something mystical that, oh, Apostle Patty's coming. She carries the glory. You can too. And it has, Pastor Norma, you want to leave all the time. Come back. <laughs> It's, 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 it's that I just, I just want to be close to him. It's not because of affliction. It's not because I have a need. You understand? I don't get close to him because of a need. I get close to him because I love him. I love him. I want to be with him. See, that's called first love. Some of you lost that. But when you, and we'll get it tonight, but when you are close and you're just close, he imparts into you and he makes deposits into you. Some people just live by, by the residue of somebody else's presence. But that's not how we're called to live. We're called to be so enamored of our God and how beautiful he is. And he whispers to me and he holds me. And he's the only one that fills voids because I've got a great husband. He's amazing. And he's so full of wisdom. But can I tell you, he's limited. He's a human being. That's why marriage don't, doesn't work. Because you're trying to get something out of somebody that they can't give you. But he can give you everything that you need. You need victory. He's got it. He knows how to take you out. And then you start to see how big this, this God is and how awesome he is. So when you come out and you're ready to fight, you're going, oh my God's got this. I just got to hide under the shadow of the Almighty. There's no worry. There's no stress. Angels are released. And the glory, say the glory. And it's for everybody. How many of you want the glory of God? Stand. And then let's just, come on, we just form a big line right here. Come girls, come, come. How about we just form like, boop, dirt. And then, and then there's going to be an impartation. Yes. Can you just start coming up here? How many of you really just want the glory?